Today I'm back in the bluegrass state of Kentucky and we'll be visiting cemeteries in Bardstown, Racine, and Paducah. My first stop of the day was in Claremont, Kentucky where I visited the Jim Beam Distillery, which is one of the best known of the Kentucky distilleries. After touring the distillery, I made the short drive down to Bardstown and a stop at the Bardstown Cemetery where we find the final resting place of the man himself, Gentleman Jim Beam. James Beauregard Beam was born August 25, 1864 in Nelson County, Kentucky. It was under his leadership that he turned the family bourbon business into one of the best known brands in the world today. Jim left the distilling business during Prohibition and moved to Florida, where he raised citrus. But when Prohibition ended, Jim returned to Kentucky and built a new distillery near his hometown and began distilling the bourbon that we know today as Jim Beam. Jim Beam directed a family business and lived in the area until his death at the age of 83 on December 27, 1947. He is resting here with his parents and other members of the Beam family. From Bardstown, I make my way west to the river city of Paducah and to the Oak Grove Cemetery where we find the grave of John T. Scopes. John Scopes was a substitute teacher at the Ray County High School in Dayton, Tennessee when he was charged with breaking a Tennessee state law known as the Butler Act, which prohibited the teaching of Darwin's theory of evolution. The Scopes trial began in the summer of 1925 and drew national attention. During the trial, Mr. Scopes' defense team included well-known lawyer Clarence Darrow and the prosecution team included Williams Jennings Bryan, who, a few years earlier, had spoken at Mr. Scopes' high school graduation. The Scopes' monkey trial, as it was known, came to an end on July 21, 1925, with Scopes being convicted and fined $100. However, the verdict was appealed and the Tennessee Supreme Court overturned the conviction because the judge had set the fine and not the jury. Scopes could have been retried, but the state of Tennessee decided not to and not pros the case. After the trial, Mr. Scopes left the teaching profession and retreated from the public eye. He returned to college and obtained a degree in geology and took a job in the oil and gas industry. John T. Scopes died on October 21, 1970 in Shreveport, Louisiana from the complications of cancer. He was 70 years old. He is resting here in Oak Grove Cemetery in Paducah, Kentucky with his wife Mildred and his parents Thomas and Mary Scopes. From Oak Grove Cemetery I made my way across town to Mount McKinton Cemetery where we find the final resting place of our 35th Vice President, Alvin Barkley. Alvin Barkley was born on November 24, 1877 in Graves County, Kentucky. He grew up on a tenant farm and later attended Emory University. He became interested in politics when he served as clerk for Congressman Charles Wheeler and he was elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1913. He served in that body until he was elected to the United States Senate in 1927. He served in the Senate from 1927 until 1949 when he was elected Vice President, serving with President Harry Truman until 1953. After completing his term as Vice President, he returned to Kentucky where he remained very popular and was again elected to the United States Senate in 1955. On April 30, 1956, Senator Alvin Barkley was scheduled to address a mock convention at Washington and Lee University in Lexington, Virginia. While addressing the students, Barkley suffered a fatal heart attack and collapsed on stage. He was 78 years old.
My final stop of the day is at the Rosine Cemetery in the tiny community of Rosine, Kentucky. Here we find the final resting place of the man known as the Father of Bluegrass, the great Bill Monroe. William Smith Monroe was born on September 13, 1911 here in Rosine, Kentucky. and He was the youngest of eight children born to James and Melissa Monroe. Bill and his siblings were introduced to music at an early age as both Bill's mother and his uncle Penn were musically talented and the children grew up playing music in the home and around the community. In the early 1930s, Bill along with his brothers Charlie and Birch formed a musical group known as the Monroe Brothers and they became well known throughout western Kentucky. A few years later, the Moreau brothers disbanded and Bill formed another group he called the Bluegrass Boys. Their type of music soon became known as Bluegrass Music and Bill Monroe became known as the father of Bluegrass. In 1939, a solemn old judge, George D. Hay, invited Bill and his Bluegrass Boys to join the Grand Ole Opry and the rest, as they say, is history. For the next 57 years, Bill and the Bluegrass Boys, one of the most popular acts not only on the Opry, but around the world. Thanks to such hits as Blue Moon of Kentucky and Uncle Penn, Bill Monroe was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1970 and into the Bluegrass Hall of Fame in 1991. Bill Monroe's influence in bluegrass and country music is still alive today over the course of more than 60 years. Some of the greatest stars in country music got their start as members of the Bluegrass Boys, including Lester Flatt, Earl Scruggs, Buck Trent, Chubby Wise, Jimmy Martin, and Ricky Skaggs, just to name a few. On March 15, 1996, Bill Monroe and his Bluegrass Boys made their final Grand Ole Opry appearance. As a couple of weeks later, the father of Bluegrass suffered a stroke, ending a career that spanned more than 67 years. The great Bill Monroe died on September 9th, 1996, just four days shy of his 85th birthday. Many of Bill's immediate family are resting here near the father of bluegrass, including his mother Melissa, his father James, his brother Charlie, and his brother Birch. Resting across the cemetery from the grave of Bill Monroe is the grave of perhaps Bill's most famous relative, Pendleton Vandiver, who was immortalized in song as Uncle Penn. After Bill's parents died, Bill lived part-time with his Uncle Penn, who would play the fiddle around the community. As a tribute to his uncle, Bill wrote and recorded a song which he called Uncle Penn, which turned out to be one of his most requested and most popular hits. Uncle Penn died in 1932 and was laid to rest here in the Rosine Cemetery. On September 13, 1973, this monument was placed at his grave, and it is inscribed with the words from the song Uncle Penn. Late in the evening about sundown, high on the hill and above the town, Uncle Penn played the fiddle. Oh, how it rings. You could hear it talk 
you could hear it sing. This concludes my visit to some of the cemeteries in central and western Kentucky. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up below. If you want to keep up with my travels, make sure you subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.